Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Chrissy and this is Barefoot in the Garden. I've always been interested in propagating because you can save so much money by growing your own stuff from your own cuttings. You don't have to rely on anybody or anything for that new tree that you want to fill in the space that you need it for. You can just simply cut it from your own stuff, cut it from walking down the side of the road like I do, go to your friend's house, see what kind of trees they have, get you a couple cuttings, go home, propagate them yourself and save tons and tons of money that way. I haven't had too much success with propagating. Um, I did do some indoor pothos. Um, I did get some rosemary going. I did get some sage going through propagation. So I can't say I've had a zero um, percent success rate, but they have been slim from the amount of attempts that I've had. When it got really, really dry earlier in the summer, I had some pineapple sage in that planter box over there that you can probably barely see um, and it was suffering so I decided to take some cuttings off of it before it potentially just died completely off. I probably took about 10 to 20 cuttings I can't remember but I've had success with two and that's what I want to show you guys today. This is the first one that I want to show you. This is actually two in one pot and there's a piece on here that is very vital to propagating pineapple sage kind of like your tomato can you see this there is roots growing along these stems so as long as whatever cutting you're taking has these roots shooting out from the stems you can see a little bit more here just like a tomato plant put that part down in the soil and you pretty much have I would say like a 75 percent success rate that those roots will take and they will thrive. Another vital key important fact is that you need to keep them moist. You need to keep the soil as moist as possible in order for those roots to want to like reach out and spread their wings. And I say that because I took like 10 to 20 cuttings and I only have three because the other pots just dried out too much for their roots to keep going. These ones were in the shade enough that they kept their self moist until I watered them. And that's actually another really important fact is that you need to keep them in a shaded area. An area that gets good ambient light, but you don't want them in the direct sunlight. And I think that I had more success with these ones because they were on the end of the shelf that got the less amount of sunlight. This is the second pineapple sage. So this pot has two. This smaller guy is one on its own. And then this one on the left is another one. This cutting on the left was bigger when I put it on the soil and this one on the right was smaller. So that's why there's so much of a size difference, but they didn't even lose a lot of their foliage. They held on to most of it. And I'm pretty sure that it's almost time for me to up the pot size. I'll just take it out so we can see what's going on in the soil. Really, really nice. Really good. So I'm gonna be putting these two pineapple sage in one of my decorative pots. I think that they'll fill the pot out really nicely. And since it is a perennial, as long as I can keep it to survive through the winter time, when it grows back in that pot in the spring, it's going to fill out and be so, so beautiful. If you're not familiar with a crepe myrtle tree, I'm going to insert some pictures of it here. They are the most breathtaking flowering tree that I've probably ever seen in my life. I never paid attention to flowering trees before I started gardening. 
and now my eyes are just wide open to every single tree that I pass up on the roadside. Here they are. I took a lot off of this tree. It was growing on the side of the road. I couldn't believe it. It was like free cuttings, like a gift from God. Uh, <clears throat> so I pulled over and I took probably two handfuls of cuttings and they were pretty long. So this is a mixture of different stems cut into different pieces and I'll count them for y'all. One, two, three, four. I have 12 cuttings in here and it looks like one, two, three, four of them are setting out new growth and that's so amazing to me because I really, I didn't think it was gonna work. And I have the same mixture in here that I have in the pineapple sage, vermiculite, compost, and garden soil. Just my own little concoction, but you can clearly see the baby leaves. This one is starting. Then we have this one. And then looks like this one has some good little buds that are starting to poke through. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. I don't want to mess with the roots yet. They might be too tender. And I feel like if I pull up on the branches to see what the roots are doing, that they might break off in the pullout, you know? So I'm going to leave them alone for now. I'm going to let them grow out some more before I start separating separating them out but I just wanted to share that with you guys two propagating successes in less than two months and I, I just cut these like two weeks ago so it hasn't been that long and they're already giving me success so really excited to see what these are going to turn into within the next couple of weeks I will keep you guys updated I'll do another update video and probably about two weeks just to show you how they're doing and what they're doing. I do want to mention that there are a lot of methods for propagating, especially when you're dealing with trees because you have hardwood and softwood. It's different than a tomato sucker where it's all the same. You know, there's different types of cuttings that you can take. So these were softwood hardwood I want to say they're like right in that fine line between it just go when it goes to straight hardwood um, and I didn't do anything special as far as like putting a plastic bag over them or putting them in a dome I know a lot of people will recommend um, having a dome on top of your cuttings for the built up of humidity but I do feel like at this time frame of the summer in Texas there's tons of humidity in the air already and I didn't want to cause any molding on the cuttings um, since I was really looking forward to them taking root um, I just left them out in the shade and let them do their thing I did use a lot of vermiculite in the potting mix reason being that you need a lot of aeration in the soil in order for those baby roots to really be able to spread their little fingers and their wings throughout the soil without any restraint you can use coconut core and perlite or vermiculite um, with a little bit of compost there's a lot of different mixtures that you can put in your pots that's just what works for me and um, i'll continue to do that until you know i'm not getting any success but as of right now the compost the garden soil and the vermiculite probably like 50 percent vermiculite 25 percent compost and 25 percent garden soil i'm a big fan of cooking some stuff up in the backyard to make it work i don't run to the store whenever i need something so this mixture is a result of me not running to the store to get coconut core and black cow or whatever to put in these pots. I just mix this stuff up with whatever I had on hand. So I hope that this video encouraged you guys to try to propagate some cuttings of your own, introduce some new plants into the garden, or give them away as gifts of love to your family and friends. And until next time, guys, keep loving life, keep growing your own food, and many, many blessings to you and yours.